What kind of positive integer n that's greater than or equal to 8 that makes this an integer? So I'm going to use this a n g m inequality to prove some inequality. And the background of this math, math, math Olympiad uh, problem from Swedish 2002 is this result from calculus. That's its background. The nth root of n limit is 1. So the inequality here, n, n to the power 1 over n minus 7 is in fact n minus 7th root of n, which is n minus 7th root of 1 times 1 all the way up to 1. n minus 9 ones times square root of n times square root of n. Uh, that's rewriting, because uh, in the end, this also multiplied to just n, right? the same thing. So, arithmetic mean, geometric mean, right? 1 times 1 times 1, listen, instead of n numbers, I have n minus 7 numbers right, in here. So that is less than, I say that is strictly less than, because n is greater than or equal to 8, right? This cannot be equal to 1, so n minus 7 numbers. 1 plus 1, all the way up to 1. Like I said, n minus 9 ones plus square root of n plus square root of n. So that is, that is what? That is n minus 7, n minus 9 plus 2 times square root of n, right? So again, further, this is n minus 7, n minus 7 minus 2 plus 2 square root of n. And this is further 1. All right, separate the fraction plus n minus 7, 2 square root of n minus 2. No problem. Right? So like I said, this part, uh, from calculus point of view, this is 1. This is approaching 0, obviously, because square root of n is much smaller than n, right? This just ignore 7 and 2. So this whole thing obviously approaching 0 as n approaches infinity. So standard result from calculus. For, so anyway, the point is that since this is going to approach, the whole thing approaches 1. So in other words, this part approaching 0, in other words, this can be small enough, right? Smaller than 1, no problem. Strictly smaller than 1. So when does, so let's loosen the inequality a little bit. Less than, let's get rid of negative 2. Make it a little bit larger, right? So here I minus 2. There I don't minus 2. Therefore, it's a little bit larger than previous. So this can be smaller than 1, obviously, when n is large enough, right? So for, I, first, I loosen it a little bit. So when does the bottom... So I'd like to know when does n minus 7 greater than half of n, obviously uh, inequality is true when n is big enough, because n is a lot bigger than half of n when n is big enough. When does this happen? Right, so in other words, half of n, right, minus this to this side, move negative 7 to that side. It's when n is bigger than 14, then this is true. So replace n minus 7 with half n, because n minus 7 is bigger than that. So now, right now it's on the bottom, right? Reciprocal. So, uh, so bigger than so less than less than one plus two square root of n over half n. All right, this is what. I believe it's 4 over square root of n. 
no problem, right? Time for yes. So when so this part obviously approaching zero. So when can this be smaller than one? Like obviously achievable. So when does this when is this smaller than one? It's when uh, square root of n is bigger than four. It's when n is bigger than six. Sixteen. Right? Obviously, this is true. Yeah, no problem. And yes. So, therefore, th this can be smaller than smaller than 2. Right? So, let's notice this is when n is bigger than 16. And also, at the same time, n is bigger than 14. So overall, when n is bigger than 16, then obviously it's going to be bigger than 14. So this is the condition, right, prerequisite for, for this to be smaller than, strictly smaller than 2, right? And also when n is bigger than 16, what happens? Is that this is strictly bigger than replace n with 16 and take it uh, n minus 7th root. Right? And so n is bigger than so and so this is bigger than 1. Obviously, doesn't this is always uh, some positive integer? Positive integer. So, but inside is already bigger than sixteen. Sixteen is bigger than one. So, obviously, strictly bigger than one. Right? For fixed, fixed n, right? For one hundred, two hundred doesn't matter. Cannot be equal to one. Strictly like larger than one, and strictly less than two. Right. So it's when n is bigger than 16. So which means when n is bigger than 16, this cannot be an integer because it's strictly larger than 1 and strictly less than 2. It right? cannot be an integer. So the only time that it the only time that it could be an integer is when n equal 1, 2. No, we require n to be bigger than or equal to 8. So 8, 9, all the way up to not equal to 16. So 16. Right, that's the only time that this can possibly be an integer. But after we Substitute, right? We just uh, test out everything. Test out 8, 9, 10, 11, 16. So there's finitely many numbers, right? Easy to test out. Turns out that the only, only possibility is 8 and 9.